Krishna. So today we're going to be looking at the pastime and appearance of Nisingade. So we're going to look at the story of Nisingade about friends and enemies because that's how this story starts out in the Bhagavatam, that the question is asked, does God have friends and enemies? Does God have people he really likes and so he's nice to them? Oh, people he doesn't like and so he's not nice to them. Is that the way God works? And what about us? Should we have friends and enemies? This is a whole story about friends and enemies. Hmm. So what are we going to learn about friends and enemies? So what's a friend? We could say a friend, someone who helps us, they support us. We could say an enemy, someone who opposes us. They stop us from doing what we like, or maybe they hurt us. So what does Prahlad Maras says? He says, in your heart, don't make a difference. Oh, these are my friends, and these are my enemies. And our only enemy is our own mind. Prahlad says, if we get victory over our real enemies, which are our desires to have things, our anger when we don't have them, our greed to have more and more, our illusion that we are God, our craziness that this world is just to control us. Then, if we're victorious over that, and we feel equal with everyone, then we actually have no enemies. It's just when we forget who we are that we imagine that we have enemies. But it looks like God has friends and enemies. It looks like that, doesn't it? It looks like some people, they get rich and they're beautiful and they're healthy. And they have a happy family and other people, they're poor and they're sick and they have a miserable family. <laughs> and some people have a good job, some people have a bad job. Some people in a rich country, some people in a poor country. Some people have ecstasy in Krishna consciousness and some people are chanting and they don't feel anything. And so we might think, well, God has friends and God has enemies. Now the answer given in the Bhagavatam is that Krishna is neutral, but the material world favors the mode of goodness. Now, if we want to know what goodness is, goodness means that which is true. So just like if you look at the room you're in, your room probably has a door or a doorway, and it probably also has walls, and maybe it has a window. So if you want to leave your room, do you leave your room through the door, through the walls, or through the window? Now, if you leave through the door, you'll be happy. 
if you try to leave through the wall, you won't be very happy. And if you try to leave through the window, crash, you'll be really, really unhappy. But that doesn't mean the person who made the house favors one thing over another. It just means that it's not that the person who built the house likes the people who walk through doors and doesn't like the people who try to walk through walls. It means that if we want to be happy in the house, we have to use it the way it was made. So if we want to be happy in the world, we have to use the world the way it's made. And when we do, we're happy. And when we don't, we're not happy. And that doesn't mean that Krishna likes some people better than others. So that was the answer given in the seventh canto of the Bhagavatam. Now we're going to look at the story. It's a story of a father who thought everybody was his enemy. You're my 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 enemy. And a son who said, No one is my friend and no one is my enemy. A very, very, very long time ago. Lord Vishnu came to earth to kill Hiranyakashipu and free the demigods from despair and grief. Hiranyakashipu had had a brother, Hiranyaksha, and Hiranyaksha had, with the other demons, tried to take all the oil out of the earth. When he did that, the earth became unbalanced and fell into the bottom of the universal Garbadak ocean. At that time, the Lord took the form of Varaha, went and rescued the earth from the bottom of the ocean, and then fought with Hiranyaka and killed him. But that made the brother, Hiranyakashipu, very angry. Lord Vishnu killed my brother. Lord Vishnu killed my brother. I am going to kill Vishnu. How am I going to get Vishnu? How am I going to get my enemy, Vishnu? That's what he thought. He decided he was going to ruin all of the ceremonies that people use to connect with Vishnu. He said, I'm going to throw blood and poop and urine in the fire sacrifices. I'm going to cut down all the trees we use for sacrifices. I'm going to burn the villages of the people who worship God. And that way, I will get back at Lord Vishnu, who killed my brother. So sometimes we might think like that. Somebody hurt me. Somebody hurt somebody in my family. Somebody hurt my friend. And I'm going to get them. I'm going to make sure I get them. And I'm going to, I'm going to do bad things. Or I'm going to hope that bad things happen to them and the people that they care about. Because they hurt me. They hurt somebody I care about, and I want them to be hurt too. And so that's what Hiranyakashipu did too. But then he was thinking, if I do bad things to the devotees of Vishnu, I might get in trouble. And maybe Vishnu will come and kill me anyway. So I better become really strong and powerful. And sometimes we think that too. We think, well, other people have hurt me or my friends. And so I'm going to get really smart and I'm going to get a good job and I'm going to get some power. And when I have all this power, then I'm going to be able to get back at my enemies or at least they won't be able to get me. I'll be safe. So Hiranyakashipu thought, let me do a lot of austerities. You know, actually, you see, we're all already safe. Krishna has this wonderful saying in the Bhagavad Gita, right in the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, in chapter 2, text 20. Maybe some of you know this verse. And if you know this verse, you can sing it with me. Na jayate mrite vakadakshe na Bhavita, 
It means that for the soul, we the soul, we never die. We've always lived and will always live. Nothing bad can ever happen to us. We're actually already powerful, but when we forget that we're the soul, we try to become powerful in another way. And we think, I'm going to become powerful. I'm, I'm going to work to become powerful. I'm going to do I'm going to do hard things and I'm going to really work and I'm going to make myself powerful. Although we're already powerful because we're part of Krishna. Krishna is powerful. So we're part of Krishna. We're already powerful. We don't need to become powerful. But when we forget that, we think, I'm going to work really, really hard and become so powerful that no one can hurt me. Many years ago, when I was a Gurukul teacher, I had one kid who was a bully. He was always bullying the other kids. It was a really big problem. And one time I talked to him and I said, why do you bully the other kids? And he said, I figure if I bully them, they'll be scared of me and they'll leave me alone. Hurt me. That was how Hiranyakashipu was thinking. So he did these austerities, right? He stood up on his tiptoes, put his hands up in the air. We can try that for a minute. Let's try that for a minute. Oh, and how long can we do this? I can do it 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. I can hardly do it for like six seconds. Oh, yeah. So he was doing it for a long time. He did it for 100 years of the demigods, and 100 years of the demigods would be one of our years times 30 times 12. Yeah, one of our years times 30 times 12. So it would be a lot. Maybe some of you can do the math. So three times 12 is 36, right? So 30 times 12 would be 360. I saw a lot of years. So that's how long he stood on his toes for a hundred of those years. <laughs> that's one year for a hundred of those years. Yeah, all right. That's a long time in our years. And then when he stood on his toes, he became really, 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 really powerful. Fire started coming out of his head and he was burning the universe. He was causing a problem. And just like, you know, anywhere when someone's causing a problem, so the police or the parents or the teachers may come and say, uh, what's going on here? So Lord Brahma came and said, you know, what's your problem? <laughs> what would you like? Now, this is kind of interesting because Hirani Kashipu was actually acting like a terrorist. And most countries have laws that they don't give terrorists what they want. But Lord Brahma said, you can have whatever you want. I'll give you a benediction. What? He said to him, you who have to die can get a benediction. And that was really clever from Lord Brahma because he's telling him, hey, you have to die, but you can get a benediction. So he's telling him right in the beginning, no matter what benediction I give you, it's not going to last. You're going to have to die. So Rani Kashipu said, oh, and then Brahma, he put this special water over the body of Hiranya Kashipu. And Hiranya Kashipu had been doing these austerities for so long, his body had become just a skeleton. Now, normally, if our bodies become a skeleton, that means we're not in the body, body's dead. But for Hirani Kashipu, his body became like a skeleton. And he was so powerful that he stayed as a soul inside the bones of the body. But Lobrama put this special water on him. And he became young and handsome and strong. And his body could withstand being hit by lightning. And oh, and he had an anthill growing around him. You can see that in this picture because he'd been there for so long. And Hirani Kashipu said, oh, I'm so glad, Lord Brahma, that you have come to give me benedictions and what I would like. I want total rule over everybody. Everybody has to listen to what I say all the time. Now, maybe some of us would like that too. You don't have to say anything, but we might think for a minute, but I like that. 
Would I like it if everybody had to listen to me all the time? Wow. So that's what he wanted. Now, of course, everyone has to listen to Krishna all the time, but Krishna gives us all freedom to do what we like. Of course, we get reactions to our freedom, but he gives us, gives us freedom. And then Hirani Kashmu said, no rivals, nobody who's equal to me. I want to rule everyone and I want to be better than everyone. I want to have all glories and all mystic powers that I can make myself smaller than the smallest, bigger than the biggest, fly in the sky, do magic. And I think that most of us would really like this. Most of us would say, wow, I'd like to become invisible and fly in the sky. And I'd like to tell everybody what to do. And I'd like it if no one be, would, would be equal to me. This was what he asked for. And then he thought, Lord Brahma said I have to die, but maybe I can trick him so I won't really have to die. And this was a big foolishness of Hiranyakashipu because Lord Brahma said, you who have to die, he should have figured it out that he was going to have to die. Instead he said, all right, all right. I don't want to be killed by anything that's living or not living. I don't want to die inside or outside. I don't want to die in the day or in the night. I don't want to die in the ground or in the sky. I don't want to be killed by a human or by an animal, by a demigod or a demon. And I don't want to be killed by any weapon. And Brahma says, yes. Now, for those of you who are a little older and who have studied Shakespeare, Shakespeare wrote a play called Macbeth. And in Macbeth, the evil, murderous king got some blessings that he also thought would let him live forever. And just like Hiranyakashipu, it didn't work. So, but anyway, Hiranyakashipu got these blessings. Lord Brahma said, yes, 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 yes. You can rule over everybody. You won't have any rival, all glories, all mystic powers and you won't be killed in any of those ways. And Hirani Kashipu was like, great, fantastic. All right, I'm gonna start with becoming Indra. By the way, although he could rule over everybody, he couldn't rule over Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. So those three personalities were never under his control. So Hirani Kashipu conquered Indra's abode. And this is one of the problems with becoming a demigod. So I think a lot of humans would like to become demigods. We're trying to make the earth planet something like a heaven. And I'm sure we've all been demigods in some other lifetime. And we're thinking, you know, I'd like to become a demigod. But the demigods are always at risk of some demon coming and taking their home and their position. And this happens over and over again. So this is what happened. Hiranyakashipu conquered Indra's throne. And then he was very proud and he forced the demigods to worship him. And, you know, th this has happened to me. I have been forced to worship people who I didn't really respect but I was forced. And this sort of a situation is really, really bad. It happens in governments in the world that some very evil person, a dictator, gets in charge, and then he tells everyone, you have to worship me. If you don't worship me, I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to put you in jail. When, when Hitler took over in uh, Nazi Germany, he told people, instead of saying you're loyal to the country, you have to say you're loyal to me. And if you don't worship me, I'm going to put you in jail. And this is really painful if someone says, you have to respect me and you have to love me and you have to worship me or I'm going to hurt you. So that's, that's a really nasty thing. And, and Krishna never deals with the devotees like that. Krishna never says we have to worship him or he's going to hurt us. And there are, there are certainly religions in the world that teach like that. They say, if you don't believe in God, if you don't worship God, then you're going to suffer forever. 
but that's that's not how Krishna works. That's how the demons work. The way the demons work is you have to respect me or I'm going to make you suffer. Now, this is really interesting because Hiranyakashipu got everything he wanted. But it says in the Bhagavatam that he chastised the demigods very severely and for no reason. And when we read that, we know that Hiranyakashipu was not happy. Right? It's one of the ways that we can tell when someone's not happy, isn't it? Right? When someone's not happy, they get very angry at other people without any reason. And I'm sure that's happened to us sometimes. You know, maybe we were really tired, or maybe we were sick, or maybe we were hungry, or maybe we were just upset about something. And so, you know, we go to somebody and we just start getting upset with them over nothing. Right? I was, I was talking to to one of my friends who said that right after they went into this lockdown because of the pandemic, he said that he and his wife got in a big argument about nothing. So because they were so upset and they were scared about the pandemic and they were upset about having to be home, they ended up getting upset with each other about nothing. So it's very interesting that Hirani Kashipu gets everything he wanted. He got all of his benedictions. And it didn't matter. He was still not happy. And this shows us, we can see this not just in Hirani Kashipu, we can see it if we look around the world today and we see people who are rich and beautiful and powerful and famous and talented, that they're not completely happy. Another way he showed he wasn't happy is he was always taking intoxication. But people don't take intoxication if they're happy. People take intoxication if they're suffering to try to forget how much they're suffering. And so it, it's really sad that Irani Kashipu did all those austerities and all that work and all that trouble to get these things that he wanted and he got them. And then when he got them, he just wanted to be intoxicated and he's yelling at everybody. So we should learn from this that not to try just for things like power in the material world. So Rani Kashibu had a wife, Kayadu, and while he was doing all those austerities, she was pregnant and she was, was there in the palace and the demigods had come to the palace when Rani Kashibu was absent when he was doing those austerities. And they thought, you know, well, we're going to take his, his pregnant wife. We're going to make sure that he doesn't have any children. And Narada said, no, nope, let me take care of her. Her child will be a great devotee. So Narada took Kayadu to his ashram and he taught her about bhakti yoga. He taught her about loving devotion to Vishnu. She wasn't really listening because the, she was thinking the whole time, when is my husband going to come back? When is my husband going to come back? When is my husband going to come back? I'm sure we know what that's like, right? We're in a class and we're not really listening because we're worried about something. So that's what it was like. She didn't really listen, but Prahlad in her womb listened. So when I was teaching Gurukul, I had a student who told me that she remembered when she was in the womb and her father would read Chaitanya Charitamrita to her mother and she was also listening. There's a lot of stories of kids where the parents read mathematics books when the mother's pregnant and the baby ends up really being good at mathematics. Well, after Harani Kashipu came back from his austerities with all his powers, then she gave birth to Prahlad. And Prahlad had, I think, uh, three other brothers also. And we also hear something about them in the Bhagavatam, but we're not going to talk about them today. So the Bhagavatam tells us the character of Prahlad by hearing from Narada when he was in the womb, he became fully Krishna conscious. And the Bhagavatam tells us something about what he was like. And this is really important that he didn't have any pride. Now, often we think that being a good devotee or a sincere devotee means that we're really, really good, that we always do what's good. We don't do what's bad. But there's a big problem with that. And one of the big problems with that is that none of us in this material world are perfectly good. 
we're just not. We all do bad things sometimes. And even when we do good things, we may be doing them so people will like us or for all kinds of other reasons. And a conditioned soul is never going to be completely good. It just isn't true. And that's not what bhakti yoga is about. Bhakti yoga isn't about being super, super good. So we check off all the boxes about being good and we can go back to God because we're good and the bad people go to another place. That's not really what it's about. It's really about how much pride or humility do we have. If we think I'm so good, then we're actually bad, even if we seem to be good. And if we're like, please, Lord, even though I have so many problems, please save me. Please be kind to me. That's what pleases Krishna. He was not disturbed when he was put into danger. Why? Because he knew, I'm an eternal soul. I can't be hurt. And he thought, everything in this world is just useless. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with me. And therefore, why should I want anything in this world? He completely could control his mind and senses. So when thoughts came into his mind, when desires came into his mind, he just thought, oh, that's a thought, that's a desire. And he wasn't very interested in that. Controlling your, your mind doesn't mean that you don't have any desires. It doesn't mean that you don't have any thoughts. It doesn't mean that you don't have any feelings. Right? It doesn't mean that. What it means is that you don't identify with them. You think, that isn't really me. And then he was kind to everyone. He, was, he always tried to do good for everyone. And it's explained what he acted, that if people were respectable, if they were his authorities, then he acted just like a servant doing even menial, simple things for them. If people didn't have things, even though he was a child, he acted like a father to help them. And to people who were equal, he acted like a sympathetic brother. So when he was five, Hirani Kashipu sent Prahlad to school. He sent Prahlad to school with these teachers, Sanda and Amarka. And this was a school not just to learn about how to read and how to write and how to do arithmetic and, and things like that. This was also a school to train Prahlad to become the king of the demons. Right? So they would teach him so much wealth. Do I have to daily more and more will come my way? Right? Like Krishna talks about the demoniac mentality. I will kill my enemies. I will be nice to my friends. I'll try to become very rich and famous in the material world. So that was the kind of instruction that he got in school. And we have to say that there's a lot of schools in the world today that basically teach like this, right? Make a lot of money get a job where everybody will respect you, make sure that you're big and powerful, make sure that you can conquer everyone. So then when school was, after Prahlad had gone to school for a while, just like any parent, Hirani Kashipu asked his son, so what did you learn in school? And Prahlad said, give up all your material attachment and just serve Vishnu. So Hirani Kashipu was very angry because he hated Vishnu. Right, and he wanted to enjoy the world, so he was really, really angry. And he, first he said to the teachers, what have you been teaching my boy? They said, we didn't teach him this. And then he says, oh, it must be devotees in disguise. It must be devotees who come in disguise. They've dressed up like someone else, and they've come into the school, and they've made my son side with my enemy, Vishnu. So Prahlad went back to school and Sanda and Amarka asked him, where did you learn about Vishnu? Where did you learn about being detached from the material world? Now Prahlad never says that he learned it from Narada because he knew if he said that, Hirani Kashipu would try to hurt Narada. Of course, Hirani Kashipu couldn't have really hurt Narada, but he knew he would try. So he didn't say that. He said, let me offer my respectful obeisances under the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whose external energy has created the distinctions of my friend and my enemy by diluting the intelligence of men. Indeed, I am now actually experiencing this, although I have previously heard of it from authoritative sources. So he said, I heard already 
He didn't say for who, he was very smart. That people will think about friends and enemies. I heard about that. Now I'm seeing it. Wow. My father, my teachers, they really think about friends and enemies. And he said to them, he said, if you're going to see this is my friend and this is my enemy, you'll never see the Lord in the heart. Because the Lord in the heart doesn't think about friends and enemies. Well, his teachers kept trying to teach him anyway. His teachers kept trying to teach him, look, these are your friends, and this is how you take care of your friends. This is how you keep them your friends. You do things for them. They do things for you. You help them out this way. help them out that way. This is what you do with your enemies, right? You try to pacify them. Maybe you give them a position. Maybe you give them some money. Then you try to make them fight among themselves, and if that doesn't work, you fight with them. And Prahlad was like, I really don't care about this friends and enemies stuff. So after some time, Hiranyakashipu asked to see Prahlad again. And this time, Prahlad said, Shravanam kirtanam smarana vandamam padasevanam dasire, ujana sakitana, manivedana. He said, my dear father, the best thing I've learned in school is you should hear about Vishnu. You should talk about Vishnu. You should remember Vishnu. You should serve Vishnu. You should become his devotee. You should become his friend. And you should surrender everything to him. Oh, Hiranyakashipu was furious. He pushed Prahlad off his lap. And he said, kill my own son. Just like if your arm is sick, you cut off your arm. So Hiranyakashipu asked his demons, to kill Prahlad. So first the demons put Prahlad in a jail. And they tried to kill him with weapons. Chindi, chindi, chop him up and pierce him. Chindi, chindi, chop him up and pierce him. Chindi, chindi, chop him up and pierce him. Imagine how scary that would be. Oh my God, it would be so scary. You're just a little kid, you're just five years old. And there's all these are horrible, ugly demons around with these weapons. But he didn't look at that. He just said, oh, my Lord, oh, Shri Krishna, I am a soul. No one can hurt me. You please save me. You please protect me. The demons couldn't do anything to him at all. Then some other demons took Prabhupada on the top of a cliff, and they threw him off. You can see Krishna catching him. Again, Prahlad wasn't scared. I am a soul. I can't be hurt. Krishna, 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 whatever you want to do with me, I am your devotee. And he didn't get hurt. Hiranyakashipu asked the demons to have a crazy elephant step on Prahlad. Instead, the elephant went, Whoa, and saluted Prahlad, who was just thinking, Krishna, you can save me. I'm a soul, and I'm your devotee. Hiranyakashipu tried to have poisonous snakes bite Prahlad. And Prahlad was thinking, I am a soul. Krishna, I am surrendered to you. You do with me whatever you like. And the snakes couldn't hurt him. Hiranyakashipu had demons throw big rocks on Prahlad. And Prahlad was thinking, I am a soul. I can't be hurt. Krishna. You please take care of me. And the rocks didn't hurt him. Hiranyakashipu had Prahlad put in fire. And he was just thinking, Krishna, I am surrendered unto you. Whatever you like. Hiranyakashipu put Prahlad in a huge storm. He put him in the freezing cold. He tried to give him poison. He poisoned his food. And Prahlad said, my dear Lord, you please accept this food before I eat. I am your surrendered servant. Well, Hiranyakashipu was pretty frustrated and confused. Hiranyakashipu got all these benedictions that he couldn't die. He didn't think that his son had done any austerities. He didn't think his son had any benedictions. And it's his son who couldn't be killed. 
So he was frustrated, confused, and he was also worried. He was scared. He thought, oh, maybe my son is more powerful than I am. And Sunda and Amarco, being not the best kind of friends, they said, oh, don't worry that you couldn't kill him. Don't worry about it. It's not very important. He's just a boy. We can just send him back to school. When you send him back to school, we'll take care of him. We'll train him in the right way. Now what happened is something very interesting. Before when Prahlad was in school, he didn't talk to anybody about Krishna. He was just thinking, Narada was right, Narada was right. But now, Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyakashipu's demons had tried to kill Prahlad in so many ways. Maybe you can try to remember. What were all the ways that Hiranyakashipu tried to kill Prahlad? Can you remember some of them? And Prahlad didn't die by any of them. So now Prahlad became very courageous. And now he didn't just think about Krishna himself, but he started to tell all the other children about Krishna. Now these were children from demon families. These were the, the children of the other royal demon families. And these were not the kind of families that would want their children to hear about worshiping Vishnu. And Prahlad now was completely fearless. He told them how when he was in the womb of his mother, Narada had instructed him and how he remembered those instructions. Srila Prabhupada loved these instructions of Prahlad Maharaj. We had a whole book about them. Prahlad says, we're the soul, we're not the body. We were in a baby body and a bigger body and a bigger body and we go into an old body and then that body dies and again we go into another body, right? Maybe some of you know that verse, you can sing it with me. Dehi no smenyata dehe komaram yovanam jara tade hantara praptir dearest tatra namuyate and there Krishna is saying, just like in this body, we go from boyhood to youth to old age. We also go into another body at death. If we're actually Krishna conscious, this doesn't confuse us. Prahlad says something really funny here. We could talk about this for a long time. It's something to really think about. He says, you're happy as long as you don't try to be happy. And as soon as you try to be happy, you become distressed. What does this mean? So you see, we're already happy. We're already a soul. We're already perfect. We're already happy. We're already eternal. We're already safe. We're already full of knowledge. We're already beautiful. We're already full of love. We already have all that. Imagine it in your own home, probably for some of you, you don't have to imagine because it's true. And in your own home, if you had lots and lots and lots and lots of wonderful food to eat and lots of wonderful toys to play with, a lot of brothers and sisters to be your friends and play with you, parents who loved you, all sorts of fun things to do, and you leave your home and you go looking for happiness when you already had it in your own home, right? And if we do that, then think of how much trouble it would be. Am I going to find it here? Am I going to find it there? So this is a question what Prahlad's talking about is noticing what we already are. Noticing that I'm already a soul. I already have everything that I need. I'm already happy. And as soon as we notice that, we can start to open up that happiness that's already there as a soul. He also says the real friend is the Lord in the heart. He's the most dear and he's in charge of everything. Our best friend is in charge of the universe. We don't need to look anywhere else for our best friend.
And he says something else really wonderful. He says, just like we take nice care of ourselves, we should try to satisfy Krishna. You know, we give ourselves a bath, we brush our teeth, we put on nice clothes, we eat nice food, we play with nice things. But Krishna is the self of the self. He is the super self. So just like, you know, I give myself a bath, I can give the deity a bath. I can put nice clothes on myself, I can put nice clothes on the deities. I want to eat nice food, I can give nice food to Krishna. And Krishna, because he's the self of the self, when I do that, I will be happy. Oh, no. Don't think that just if you're courageous for Krishna, that everything just goes smoothly because it didn't when Prahlad is so fearless that he started teaching all the other kids. Hiranyakashipu got a hundred, a thousand, a million times more angry than he had been before. And before he was so angry that he had tried to kill Prahlad. Remember with the elephants and the poison and the fire and the storm and the cold and the snakes and the chindi chindi trident. So he was already angry enough to kill Prahlad. And now his anger got more and more and more and more. And when the teacher Sunda and Amarka came to Hirani Kashipu, said Prahlad is now preaching to the other kids. He said, what is the source of your power? How can you act in such a way to challenge me, me? I am the chief of the universe and you're challenging me. Where are you getting your power? I didn't see you do any austerities. How do you have power? And what does Prahlad answer? Prahlad says, don't think about this friends and enemies business. Have your mind be equal to everyone. Your only enemy is your mind. Come on, my dear father, I'm not your enemy. I'm your child. There's no one in this world who's your enemy. It's all in your mind. My power is from God, just like yours is. All of us get our power from God. From God, where's your God? Where's your God, Prahlad, who's giving you this power? Oh, my dear father, my God's everywhere, in everything. Oh, is he in this pillar? Yes. I'll kill him, and if he's not here, I will kill you. So when Hirani Kashipu hit the pillar, at first there was a huge noise and everyone's looking around to try to find the source of the sound. And then another noise when the pillar breaks and Hirani Kashipu was so surprised. This half man, half lion comes out of the pillar. Hirani Kashipu is thinking, who is this? Who? Is this half man, half lion? <laughs> Maybe Lord Vishnu had a trick. But <laughs> I'll be able to kill him easily. And Hirani Kashipu takes out his sword and started in his club and he started to attack the Singadev. The Singadev had arms that look like armies. Think about the relationship between the word arms and the word armies. And the Singadev had so many arms that looked like armies. And he had a conch shell, a disc, a club, a lotus. And with those, even the lotus, he's just killed Hiranyakashipu's demon soldiers. And as Hiranyakashipu attacked him, he had such an effulgence that Hiranyakashipu seemed to disappear. Now this picture is of Nisingadev deity in Mayapur, and this picture was taken 
was a photographer who took this picture. And when she went back to look at the picture, that's what she saw. This is a real picture. It hasn't been changed with Photoshop or anything like that. And when she took the picture, she just saw the deity. It wasn't until later when she looked in her camera that she saw the Singadev looking like this. So this is how the Singadev looked when Hiranyakashipu attacked. And he had such a bright effulgence that Hiranyakashipu, when he was attacking the Singadev, you couldn't even see him. Then the Singadev captured the great demon along with his club, just like Garuda might capture a great snake. So Garuda is an eagle, pounces on a snake, has him in his mouth. So then we think the story's over. But the Singadev gave Hiranyakashipu a chance to slip from his hand. Like sometimes Garuda plays with the snake and lets it fall out of his mouth for a minute. Then the demigods who've lost their homes and their jobs, and they're watching this battle, but they're hiding behind the clouds because they're thinking, we don't want Hiranyakashipu to see that we're cheering for Nisingadev. Suppose Nisingadev loses then we're going to be in a lot of trouble with Hiranyakashipu. And when they saw that Hiranyakashipu was dropped from the Singadev's hands, they were very upset. Then the Singadev started roaring. And Hiranyakashipu was bravely attacking. He had his foot. Because the singing day was not only boring, but ha ha ha. Then Lord Brahma said to Prahlad, you go and pray. Then immediately, the Singadev became peaceful. his hand on 
Prahlad's head. And then Prahlad felt as if he had been very dirty and sweaty and hot and bothered and had just taken a shower and was completely cleaned of any illusions and any material desires. He said to the Lord, although you do not put your hand on the head of almost anyone, still, you have so kindly put your hand on my head. All the symptoms of ecstasy filled the body of Prahlad, his heart filled with love, his eyes filled with tears. And he said, I'm not scared of your ferocious mouth and tongue, your tongue looking like a dueling sword. I'm not scared of your eyes looking like the sun. I'm not scared of your frowning eyebrows. I don't fear your sharp, pinching teeth. I'm not afraid of your garland of intestines. When the Singadev killed Hiranyakashipu, he ripped out the intestines, bloody, gory intestines. That's where our poop is, you know? And he put it on around his neck like a garland. And Prahlad said, I'm not afraid of your garland of intestines. And blood was all over the hair of the Singadev. He said, I'm not afraid of your mane soaked with blood. I'm not afraid of your high ears. I don't feel your heart. I don't feel your sharp nails. I'm not afraid of you. I know you. But I don't want to be your devotee alone. I want everybody to love you. I want everyone to feel this ecstasy. I want everyone to love you. Please, all these people who hurt me, all these people that I could see as my enemies, I want them to experience supreme joy. I, that's all. Nisingadev says, no, 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 you have to take something. I have to be able to give you something. It's my pastime to give benedictions. Let me give you something. Pilate said, no, I'm not serving you to get something. You're not a shop that I go to to buy something. If you want to give me something, then let there be no desire for anything in my heart. What a funny thing to ask for. Give me the fact that I want nothing to be given to me. And please forgive my father. I, I don't think in our life anyone's ever tried to hurt us as much as Hiranyakashipu tried to hurt Prahlad. And all Prahlad wanted was good for him. Then Hiranyakashipu, then Nisingadev says to Prahlad, my dear Prahlad, devotees like you never want anything in this world. But I want you to enjoy the opulences of the demons. Be their king. For one duration of Manu, I want you to be the king of the demons, and I want you to enjoy what the demons enjoy. Of course, Prahlad would enjoy that as the gift of the Lord, not in a demoniac mentality. And then, of course, Brahma crowns Prahlad as the king of the demons to guide the demons in devotional service. The Singade Bhagavan Aki Jai. When we think about friends and enemies, we can say someone's a friend if they try to help us to connect with the Lord. But otherwise, there's not really anyone who can help us and no one who can hurt us. We're a perfect soul who has everything we need. Suppose in our lives, we really had friendship and faith in the Lord and therefore didn't see people as friends or enemies. How happy would we be? <laughs>
So we just have a few more minutes and I wanted to show you something else. So if you want some activities for Nisingadev's Appearance Day, you can go to my website, armiladevidasi.org. And there you'll see free educational materials for children and youth and you'll see festival activity books. And if you click on that, you'll see there's an activity book about Nisingadev. So let's look for a minute at this activity book about Nisingadev. So there's lots and lots of activities here that you can do. It's according to the nine processes of devotional service. So here, let's look at some of the activities about the deity. So these are some things that you can do. Describing Ms. Nisingadev's form from memory, making a table of facts, a drawing of Nisingadev, coloring a picture with cloth, beads, and sequins, tell a partner about 10 facts, make a poem, song, or drawing. How big was Nisingadev? And make a scale model. A list of things from A to Z, a mask, plan a festival, be an art critic and look at a painting of Nisingadev, make a model, a rhyming poem, a cake. This is a really fun thing. Make a, fair, a pair of Nisingadev's lotus hands by cutting long nails out of a plastic milk bottle and attach them to old gloves and paint them and add some fur. Make a frame for a picture of Lord Nisingadev that looks like a broken pillar, a diorama, Read the description of Nisingadev's laughter and the instructions of Kapiladev to meditate on the laughter of Vishnu. Find other places in scripture where the Lord's laughter is described and make an essay, poem, drawing, song, or dance to describe that laughter. Pick five people who were there when Nisingadev appeared, give a speech or write an essay on how they would describe the form. A list of the allegories used to describe Nisingadev's form, lotus hands, thunderbolt, nails, hawk, garuda, Put them into categories. Read the stories about the deity of Nisingadev in Mayapur Dham. And then we have activities for different ages, like for very young children, you can make a pillar out of blocks, pretend to be Hiranyakashipu, hit the pillar, and as it falls down, pretend to be Nisingadev, making a sound and jumping up. Stuff a sock with paper and wear it as a garland and pretend it's intestines. And here's a game which you can do about Nisingadev. You can find photos of Nisingadev deities in different parts of the world. You can learn how to do makeup to make a lion face. Who's doing those arrows on my screen? You can make a decorated frame for Nisingadev. You could read uh, descriptions of Nisingadev form from different scriptures, research different forms of Nisingadev. And here we have the resources for you so that you can do all those. And there's lots and lots more activities dozens and dozens of more activities. So if we go to Holy Name, then we have more activities. This is all about prayers about Nisingadev. So from the Nisingadev prayers from the Bhagavatam, for the Nisingadev prayers from the Nisinga Kavacha. So we have lots and lots of things that you can do and the things for 14 to 18 years are things that even adults can do. And we have, again, a lot of the resources here. We have a lot of the prayers, a lot of the pictures. So there's many, many things that you could do for Nisingadev. So thank you very much for coming. Nisingadev Bhagavan Ki Jai. Prahlad Maharaj Ki Jai. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hari, 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 bo. Hari, hari, bo. Some people had raised their hands. I don't know if you want to take questions. Oh, she just disappeared. That's the goal. I think she left. I guess that means we're not doing questions. All right. 
Well, thank you everybody for all glories to learn to sing today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.